Now let's talk supplies. So one of the first things you'll need to make your Zephyr sweater is yarn. So what I used is uh, Chick Fit Knits uh, Fine Hand Dyed Yarns. This is a local hand dyer in my area. Um, and I'm using the Robin's Egg color of the Silky Singles. So this is one of the more high-end uh, yarns. It's 70% superwash merino wool and 30% mulberry silk. Um, and it comes in 438 yards per 100 grams. It's a fingering weight yarn, though it is a bit on the lighter side of fingering weight. Um, so it's definitely a much light, lighter yarn, but that creates a very nice lightweight fabric for your crocheted sweater. The hook you're going to need primarily is going to be a size C hook. So that's going to be a 2.75 millimeter hook. So this one is one that I got from Lether Company. Um, so I will have links in uh, the description box for the yarn and the hooks. Um, you'll also see here that I do have another hook in size B. That is going to be 2.25 millimeter. This is an optional hook size for if you want to have a tighter ribbing, such as what I have here around the collar. Um, so if you would like a tighter ribbing around the collar or the bottom or the cuffs around the sleeves, um, you can feel free to drop down a hook size. If you find that you don't need that tighter collar, you can just stick with the C hook for the entire uh, project. So those are your options for your hooks. C for your main one, B in case you want the optional tighter ribbing. You're also going to need um, some stitch markers. So I have a few samples here. I've got, um, they look, you know, really nice, but you can just get uh, some cheap stitch markers from Amazon, or you can purchase them at a local yarn shop or like a Michaels or something like that. And just buy some stitch markers that have like a clasp on them. So then that way you can move them in and out of stitches. You're going to need 13 of those for this project. You're also going to need a pair of scissors to be able to cut. You'll need some tapestry needles uh, to be able to weave in your yarn ends. There's not any seaming that we do in this really, so you won't need them to seam, but you will need them for any loose ends you need to sew in. You'll also definitely want some sort of tape measurer. Uh, this will be useful for measuring the wearer of the sweater, whether that's you or somebody you're making it for. Um, I have this one that I just have had for a while that has inches and centimeters for whichever system you want to use, but you'll also want to make sure you have a rule, um, a measuring device of some kind to be able to measure things like gauge, which we'll talk about later. Another thing I have here is my uh, book that I use to keep track of rows and rounds. So this is what I use to just kind of like, you know, mark anytime I'm moving along in the pattern. Um, that way I don't lose track of where my rounds and rows are, especially since this is going to involve some increasing and decreasing at certain rows and rounds. So you'll definitely want to make sure you're doing that um, and keeping track of that so that you can keep up with when you need to do increases and decreases. So with all those supplies, you are now ready to get started on the next step, which is making your gauge swatch. For any sort of wearable project where fit is going to matter, you're definitely going to not want to skip this part, and that is making the gauge swatch. It is not the world's most exciting part, I'm not going to lie to you, but it is extremely important and um, yeah, so here we go. So what I did is I worked up a gauge swatch of 36 half double crochets and 36 rows, that way I had plenty of room, and then I washed it blocked it and treated it like I would the actual garment. So that way I could see about where the stitches are going to be. Now, this is in a different color because I was using a different um, yarn color, but it's the exact same uh, yarn fiber content and it's the same brand and all of that. And it's the same yardage. So it's I'm going to work up the same as the other one. So what you usually look for is you'll look for four inches. Um, and in that four inches, you would go through and you would line it up with a stitch just wherever you can. And then every time you see a stitch followed by a gap, so a stitch followed by a gap, that counts as one stitch. So let me actually get a little bit closer here. Okay. So what you would do is you would count and see, okay, so we've got one stitch plus a gap, one stitch plus a gap, one stitch plus a gap. So each one of those is going to count as one stitch because each stitch takes up the space of that little post plus that gap. So you would count each of those spaces as one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. You count them all the way until you get here to your four inch mark, or if you're using metric, you would use the 10 centimeter mark. And then you would try to see that you can match my gauge in the pattern as close as possible. And then you would do the same thing. You would turn it around 
And then you would do the same thing for rows. So every time that there's one of these little dips in the rows, um, that's going to be two rows because the half double crochets um, look different on both sides. So every time you see one of those dips, it's two. So you would go you know, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, et cetera. So you hit four inches or 10 centimeters. The gauge for this uh, project is 27 and a half half double crochets by 25 rows in four inches or 10 centimeters. A way to kind of see that if you can match gauge is if you can do what is called wraps per inch. So I just have this um, little cheapy wooden tool that I got, um, but you can just use any hard plastic ruler or hard wooden ruler and just wrap your yarn around. But what that means is that if you were to take your yarn and you were to start over at zero and you start wrapping it, not too tightly, but definitely want to make sure that it's snug on there so that all of the yarn is right next to each other. And if you can do that, you want to try to get as close to the wraps per inch that I have, because then you have a better chance of being able to meet gauge with a similar yarn. Now, if you find that this is just too much of an extra step, most people don't even take the time to do this. This is just, you know, whenever I'm looking for yarn, I tend to look at the weight and the number of yards per gram. Um, and that kind of gives me a good guide. But then I'll also kind of go that little bit of an extra mile and be like, hey, how many wraps per inch does this actually come out to? Because that's going to be more important than um, like the yarn weight, the yarn, the yardage and same if it's like a fingering weight or a medium weight, because there's variations within even those categories. So like a fingering weight yarn can be 18 wraps per inch, or it could be 21 wraps per inch or something like that. And you're like, those are going to make huge differences in how big your stitches and rows are going to be. So if I do that and wrap it around like this, nice and snug here, not too stretched, not too tight or anything. I could count through and find that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. This is about 23 wraps per inch. Um, I think it's actually about like 22 is what I've seen like on the label or um, when I've done it before. So around 22, 23 wraps per inch. So if your yarn is close to that, like within about one wrap per inch up above or below, you're probably going to be just fine. Um, the other thing you'll have to take into account is whether or not you are a tight crocheter or a loose crocheter, because regardless of your yarn weight, if you crochet really tight, you might have a smaller gauge than me, so you might have to go up a hook size. And if you crochet pretty loose, you might have to go lower in hook size. Um, so, you know, you just have to play around with that, experiment with it, take the time, really just enjoy crocheting your swatches until you get it right, because you definitely don't want to spend all that time making a sweater for it to turn out to be the wrong size. Um, so yeah, there you go. So that is everything you need to know about gauge. So now, once you're done with your gauge swatch and you figured all that out, you are ready to get started on your actual Zephyr sweater. To begin your sweater, we will be working the neck ribbing. So this is going to be the part that goes around the neck that has to fit over the head. So one thing that I like to do is I prefer a tighter ribbing around my neck um, and sleeves and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop down to my uh, smaller hook size, which is a size B. That's going to be the 2.25 millimeter. That's a really small hook right here. Um, and this will create a tighter ribbing. However, uh, knowing that some people prefer a more relaxed neck or a looser neck or the ribbing to not just be so tight, you can always feel free to opt to just stick with the size C hook and go with the regular uh, 2.75 millimeter. Or if that's even a little too tight, you can always go up a hook size and go up to something like a size D, which is like a 3.25 millimeter or a size E, which is 3.5 millimeter. Kind of test it out, experiment. Feel free to try out whatever ribbing you need, but regardless of whichever one you choose, all of the ribbing is going to work the same way. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So I'm gonna grab my hook, my yarn here, and to begin your ribbing, you're going to start with a slip knot. So let's go ahead and get that on our hook.
And then you're going to chain a total of 10 chains. So I'm going to go ahead and do those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, after you chain your 10th one, you're going to look to see that you have this first chain from your hook, which we just pulled this loop through. We're not going to work into that one. That's our turning chain. So that's going to be one we always skip. That doesn't ever count as a stitch. So we actually have nine chains we're going to be working into because our rib will be nine stitches wide. So what I'm going to do is work a half double crochet into the second chain from my hook. A half double crochet, what we're going to do is yarn over our hook like this. Insert our hook into our chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, and we will now have three loops on our hook. Once we have those three loops, all we have to do is yarn over and just pull through all three loops at the same time. And there we go. Created my very first half double crochet. Then I'll just do another half double crochet into the next chain. So that's going to be this one right here. This big gappy one right here is the one where I just worked into. So the next one will be right here. So I'll do my yarn over like this, insert my hook into the half to, or into the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop. Got three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And now I've completed two half double crochets. So then I'll just keep going, putting a half double crochet into every chain snagged right there. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. So that should be our last one. So that is our very first row of half double crochets. So now for the next part, to make the ribbing, what we're going to do is a special technique where instead of working regular stitches, we're going to be working what's called the back loop only. So to do that, what I'm going to do is chain one. And remember, that's going to be our turning chain, so we never count that. We will turn our work. And then if we look along the top of our stitches here, very tops of them, we'll see all these Vs that are running along the top. Each of those Vs are the loops of our stitch. The one that's closest to us, this one right here, that one is our front loop. And the one behind that one to the back, that's our back loop. Um, so what we're going to do is actually, instead of working under both of these loops of the V, we're just going to work under this back loop right here. So I'm going to go ahead and yarn over, go underneath just that back loop like this. Just like that, just the back loop. Then yarn over, pull up my loop and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on my hook. And that will create my first back loop half double crochet. And then I just do that into every stitch across. So that was number one. I should have a total of nine. So this is number two going through just the back loop there, pulling up a loop, completing my half double crochet. So there's number two. And then do the next one into the back loop only. That's number three. Then do it into the next one, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight. And then this last one can sometimes be a bit difficult to find, but if you really turn your work towards yourself like this, you'll see that there should be a V that pops out right there, a V right there. 
So you're going to work your half double crochet into this back loop right here. So we're going to yarn over, go through that back loop. And we'll complete our half double crochet. And you have just created your very first row of ribbing. So it's going to create this nice little ridge right here. And this ridge is where we get that ribbing effect. Plus also when we work in the back loop only, it's a little bit stretchier. So that way it fits a little bit better around our neck when we try to put it on. So then the next row, we're just going to repeat what we just did for row two. So I'll go ahead and chain one, turn my work, look for those V's on the top. Be careful that you don't accidentally look for these V's. These V's are on the side. That's part of the half double crochet. That's where we yarned over our loops or yarned over our hook. We don't want to work into those. We want to turn it to where we're looking at the top of the stitches. So we find the top V and we will work our um, half double crochet into the back of the loop for our top of the V. And there we go. And then we just do that one. Two, three, four, five. And right now it's a little bit fiddly, only because there's really not much to work with. Um, the fabric is not very big. You're also working with a thin yarn and a small hook. So if this might feel a little challenging or kind of holding everything pretty tight, it's okay. That happens sometimes when you're first working with smaller uh, crochet pieces, but it's well worth it for the look in the end because it gives you that nice lightweight fabric. It looks like a very nice uh, professionally made sweater. So it's not like, you know, like the homespun, which, you know, of course, if that's the look you're going for, that's, you know, a, a fine look as well. But I really like to go for sweaters that look a little bit more like, you know, elevated, more stylish. And so the lightweight yarns and the smaller hooks tend to give you that effect a little better. Anyway, so now that we've done that, you're basically just going to repeat that over and over again. You're just going to chain one, and just work nine half double crochets into the back loops only across. And you do that for however many rows that the pattern tells you to. And that's going to give you this nice long strip of ribbing that will look just like the ribbing around the collar of a sweater. It's gonna look so cool. I really, really like that effect. And what's great about doing it with half double crochets is because earlier I mentioned that side V, this side V looks really good and just looks like that nice, like clean knitted ribbing that you might see in like a really beautifully knitted sweater. Um, and you can get that same effect by doing crochet stitches as well here. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to work the rest of this off camera. And then once I get that worked up, I will show you what to do once you reach the end and also how you know that you have the right number of rows. All right, I've been working up my ribbing. And as you can see, I've got this nice long strip here. Um, if I were to wrap it around, you could see that it would be the size of about the neck of a collar. Um, so what you'll wanna do is do a fit check. So you would just kind of hold these pieces together so that way you don't join them and have to undo it later if it's too tight or anything. What you wanna do is make sure it fits just over the head. Um, and remember that it's going to stretch a bit. So it should stretch over the head and then it will pop right back to be the right size for the neck. If for some reason, even with stretch, it's still just not going over the head, that's when I would maybe opt to go for a larger hook and try starting this over. Um, so that way you get the same number of rows that you need, but it does give you a bit more of a relaxed rib. Another thing to do, if you're not sure about the number of rows and if you did the correct number, is you can check the ridges on your ribbing here. So on one side, the ribbing will start with a ridge at the very first row. What I like to do is turn it over so that the ridge is the second row. So you'll have this kind of flat gap right here. 
then followed by a ridge because then I can count those by twos. So I'll just count, you know, each ridge as two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, et cetera, all the way until I get to the very last ridge here. This very last ridge should be my final row. So once you get to the final row of your ribbing that your pattern tells you, it's now time to join. So the instructions for joining tell you that you're going to have right side out. So what that means is just whichever side um, is going to be the right side of the sweater, the part that's going to show that people will see. So what that means is you're going to look for this ridge here, and this side is going to be the right side. So then we're going to fold this part over, making sure we don't twist. And you can see how this ridge lines up with this groove. And it's going to basically create this nice little seamless look where it just looks like the ribbing continues around without any sort of gap or seam in it. So then what we need to do is we're going to chain one. I'm actually going to hug a little closer here so that way you can see it better. Okay. And we're going to line up each stitch to each stitch. So what we'll do is we're going to go through this stitch right here. So I'm going to go through it, through the front, and I'm going to find the first stitch along here. So if I can kind of eyeball it, it would be about like, you know, there should be nine. So about like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's go right there. We'll go through there. We're going to have our hook through both of those pieces. We will then yarn over and just pull a slip stitch through all of the things on our hook. So that's going to join our ribbing together. Nice and neat. So there's our very first one. So then we're going to do it into the second one. So we're going to go through the front of the stitch and then find the corresponding loop here. So that's going to be number two. If you're not quite sure where it is, just kind of place it where you think it'll look good. It's going to be on the inside. It's okay if it's off a little bit, it's going to look good in the end anyway. So then we're going to go to the back here, grab our yarn, pull it through the first piece and the second stitch that we did and the loop that's on our hook. So we're slipping it all together. So we're not doing any more yarn overs. We're just slipping it together nice and tight. Okay. And then we do the same thing into the third stitch. So we're going to go through the front of the third stitch, then into the next free loop of the other part of the ribbing. And look at the back here and make sure we're grabbing our yarn and then just pull that yarn through everything. So pull it through everything and that will join it together. Okay. Definitely go slow on this part. There's no need to rush this. Make sure you're taking your time. If you need to pull your hook through each thing one at a time, rather than in one smooth motion, you can do that. I like to do that too. So I'm going to go through just this first one, then the next one, then turn it, pull my yarn through just the first one, then continue pulling it through the second one, then continue pulling it through the loop on my hook. And there we go. And I'll just keep doing that all the way across until I have nine joined slip stitches. Try to make sure I'm getting through both loops here. So that way it's grabbing the whole stitch, then through this kind of corner right here. Grab my yarn. Try to make sure you're not accidentally grabbing the tail from the beginning of our chain earlier. Okay, there we go. So now, once I have all of that joined together, you can see now that it creates this nice little ridge here that kind of blends in with the rest of them. So it doesn't look like it's really out of place. Um, so there you go. You've got yourself a nice joined rib. So now for this next part, I'm going to stretch up and we are now ready to begin the neck of our sweater.
So to do that, I'm going to switch over to my C hook, my regular sized hook for the rest of this. And I'm going to turn to where the ridges are on the outside here. And notice that my yarn is kind of coming from the inside. I can go ahead and just take that and push it through the neck hole here. So then that way the yarn isn't inside my neck hole of my sweater. Let me put a hole back a bit. So that way it's not like through the neck hole here. So the yarn is coming out from the top of here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hook, put it into the loop. And now what I'll be doing is working into the sides of the ribbing. So to work the sides of the ribbing, what the pattern will tell you is that for every ridge that you see, you're going to work one and a half double crochet. For every groove or gap or dip that you see, you're going to work two half double crochets. And what this does is this will increase it from the number of rows, it'll increase it 1.5 times. So the stitch count in your uh, pattern will tell you basically how many stitches you need to do. But as long as you follow this um, pattern repeat of working one into each ridge and two into each gap, it's going to work out to the right number. So here we go. So we're going to chain one and into the first ridge here. Yep, that very first one we just joined. I'm going to yarn over and just kind of find a place to insert my hook. So I'm just going to insert it right there. And I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Three loops on my hook, yarn over, and then pull through those three. I've made my first half double crochet. Now a tip that a lot of um, expert crocheters will do, and beginners can definitely do this as well, is that very first stitch can sometimes be easy to miss. So I go ahead and take just like a stitch marker, so like a cute little claspy thing, or you can get a contrast piece of yarn that you just tie into there. But I'm gonna stick this into that stitch so that way i know that that's my very first stitch of the round there we go now that i've done that i can just work away the rest of the way so now i'm into a dip so i'm going to work two half double crochets so just like with the ridges kind of pick a place stick my hook in yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three so that's the first one inside of this dip and then into the next one i'll work the next stitch. So there's two half double crochets in that dip right there. So I've worked three stitches so far, one into the ridge, two into the, <clears throat> the dip here. And then I'll just do that again. I'll work one half double crochet into this ridge, and then two half double crochets into this dip. And then do that again into the ridge <clears throat> and then into the dip i do two now one thing you do want to try to make sure you don't do is sometimes along the side we might have this little extra kind of one loop hanging off if i were to work a stitch into that that can create kind of this big gap right here so instead of working under just one loop try to see if there's like a second one you could put it under as well it just gives it a little bit more of a tight, secure look to that stitch so that you don't have a bunch of these wide holes and gaps. So that way it doesn't, you know, get, um, you know, just too many holes and gaps in your shirt. You don't want that. Um, so there we go. So I'm just going to continue working that off camera. And then I will show you once I get around what to do when you get to the beginning of your round. All right, I'm coming up to the end here. So I've just worked a half double crochet into this final ridge before this first ridge we worked into. So I have one more dip where I'm going to work two half double crochets. There we go. And then once I do those, the pattern is then going to say to slip stitch into the first half double crochet to join. So what that means is I'll take my stitch marked stitch here and then I can see exactly where I put it. I'll insert my hook into that stitch. I'll take my stitch marker out now. And then I'll grab another piece of yarn here. So I'll just yarn over and then just slip stitch. And that 
joins my stitches. And so the very first stitch is going to be the one I just joined into. The last stitch I made is right here. And then this little piece right here is our slip stitch join. So we want to make sure we never accidentally work into that. So I like to kind of maybe tighten that one a little bit so that way I can see that it's really small. So then that way when I do the next part, which is to turn, I can then yarn over and go into that stitch right there. I don't want to go into my turning chain. And if I make it really tight, it's going to be almost impossible to work into. So I won't accidentally work into it either. So then I'll go ahead and work my first half double crochet into that first stitch. And because that is now my new round that I'm starting, that's going to be the very first stitch. Now, because we did a joining slip stitch, we actually don't need to do another chain one because that will kind of act more as like our chain one. So we don't need to do an extra one. That just adds a little bit of extra bulk that we don't want in our sweater. So I'll go ahead and take my um, stitch marker, go ahead and put it under both of the loops of the half double crochet I just made here. And there we go. And then we basically will just do exactly that. We'll work into every half double crochet going under those beads and just do half double crochets in every stitch all the way around. And then we join with the slip stitch into the first one again, and then we tighten it so we don't accidentally work into it. Turn, work half double crochets around. Just, just that easy. Now, there is going to be one thing you'll have to do. Obviously, to make a sweater, it can't just be this size the whole time. We're going to need to make it grow. So what I'm gonna do in the next part is show you how to do an increase because every pattern is going to tell you to increase in, after a certain number of stitches so that, that way we can grow the yoke so that it creates this nice circle to go around the shoulders and chest. I've gone ahead and switched over to a smaller sample just so then I could show this next part and it would go a little bit more quickly than if I did it on my full sized uh, sweater. Um, but essentially what I've done is I worked up a um, neck ribbing here uh, that's shorter. I've already gone ahead and done the first round where you work into the side of the ribbing. Um, and then now I've joined with the very first stitch. So this next part, what you're going to do is this is where we're going to start placing all of our stitch markers to help us begin our increasing pattern. So I've already joined with the slip stitch into the first stitch. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to turn and then make sure I tighten down that turning chain. This very first half double crochet, I'm going to go ahead and work a half double crochet into it. So that counts as my very first stitch. And then once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take one of my stitch markers. So this is my first stitch marker and put it into that first stitch. That way I always have the first stitch of the round marked. I'm going to go ahead and do that under both loops here, just like that. Okay. And then in the pattern, it's going to tell you, depending on your size, to work a certain number of stitches and then to work two half double crochets into the next one and then place a stitch marker and then repeat that all the way around. So for our purposes, I'm going to say let's do um, uh, three stitches and then we'll do an increase. So we'll do one. So that counts as my first one. And then I do two. And then I do three. Wait, no, sorry. I meant, oh my gosh, I apologize. Because I it's 36 stitches on this and I need it to be 12. So basically it's the same principle. So it's going to be every third stitch I'm going to increase. Sorry about that. So I'll work two stitches. Then in the next one, I will work an increase by doing two half double crochets into the same stitch. So there's one half double crochet. And then back into that exact same stitch, I will work a second half double crochet. And then I'm going to take my stitch marker, another one here, and place it in that last stitch that I just created. So I'm going to find both of those loops. So that V that's on the top there and place my stitch marker underneath both of those. So that will mark where one of the increase has happened. So I should have two stitch markers at this point. And then I'll just repeat that over and over again. So I'll now go one, two and then in the third one do my increase so do one two 
two. And then before continuing, go ahead and grab a third stitch marker and mark that last stitch that I just made. Okay. So what this is doing is that right now, because I have 36 stitches in my sample and you're going to have however many it is for uh, your actual sweater, you are increasing by 12 stitches. So with 36 stitches, if I increase every third stitch, uh, because 36 divided by 12 is 3, that's going to move it from 36 to the next multiple of 12, which is, I believe, 48. So that's going to be 4 stitches every or 12 times around. So if you're, if you're like, I don't want to hear about all the math stuff, you don't have to. Just know that if you follow the pattern, it will increase it at the regular intervals that you need. And so in the end, you're going to have 12 of these increases plus the beginning of round um, stitch marker. So you'll have a total of 13 stitch markers by the time you make it all the way around. So there's one, two, and then I increase in the third one. Grab another stitch marker. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue working until I get towards the last stitch, just to show you how to make sure you get it into the correct one. Um, and then I will, I'll do that off camera, and then I will join you back when I get close to the end. All right, so I just made it around to my last three stitches. So I just placed my 12th stitch marker here in my last increase. So now we're going to do our final increase where our 13th stitch marker is going to go. So I'll work my half double crochets into the next two stitches. And then in this very last one, so this is going to be our last stitch, is this one with the, if you turn it over, you can see the Vs, the V right here. Um, and then this represents our very first stitch. And then this is just kind of where the turning chain was. So we're not worried about working into that spot. So make sure you're putting it into this one right here, underneath that V. And we're going to do two half double crochets into that last one. But rather than putting a new stitch marker in here right now, because this is the very last stitch, when we join and then turn, that's going to be the first stitch we work into. So I'm actually going to wait to put a stitch marker in until I get to that point. But in the meantime, what you can do is take your very first stitch marker. You can kind of pull to see like where it entered the stitch if you put it in underneath the Vs. And we're going to insert our hook into that stitch with our stitch marker to the left, so that way it stays out of the way. And then we'll go ahead and join with the slip stitch into that first one. Make sure we kind of tighten that chain down there. And then now we're ready to turn. So we should have all of these stitch markers now. And then the very first stitch is going to be this one. That was one of the two that I entered into that last stitch. So that's the one I'm going to make sure I work into. And then once I do, This very first stitch is going to be the one I mark with my 13th stitch marker. So go ahead and do that. Sometimes it helps to just pull your hook out and do it like this. So you'll find where that V is. So it's going to be this loop that goes around our active yarn here. So we'll go underneath the legs of that one. Okay. There we go, got our stitch marker and our very first stitch. And it's going to be quite a lot dangling on your sweater to start with, but as we continue to do increases, the spaces between these will get bigger. And then eventually, um, once you're done increasing, these will just all be removed anyway. But for now, this makes it so you don't have to do a bunch of counting, which is very helpful when it comes to your increase rounds. So what I'm gonna show you now is how to work a non-increase round dealing with all of these stitch markers. So anytime you have a non-increase round, so you're just working half double crochets all around, all you do is you just work one stitch in every stitch. 
And when you encounter a stitch marker, you're simply going to remove it. So in this case, I'm going to take this one stitch marker out, work my stitch into that stitch that was marked, create my half double crochet, and then just pop the stitch marker right back into the one I just made. So that way it just moves up into the same spot, just one round up. And then I'll just do that all the way around. So then I'll work my next stitches, half double crochet in each. And then I've just reached a stitch with a stitch marker in it. So I will take my marker out, work my half double crochet into that stitch. And then pop it right back in. So <clears throat> in your first round, it's going to be kind of annoying because you're going to be doing this pretty frequently. Um, but it is worth it to not have to count every single time you have to do an increase because um, that just it becomes annoying and if you miss anything you miss a stitch count it just it becomes very frustrating so it's definitely worth it to take the time to place your stitch markers that way every time you need to do an increase they're right there telling you exactly where you need to do it so i'm going to show you now what to do <clears throat> if this was an increase round so Obviously, it's not going to be, you wouldn't do this on the same round as a non-increase. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you what to do. So what you'll do is every time it's an increase round, you're going to work to a stitch marker, not including the very first one of the round. So that's something I need to make sure I clarify. Anytime you're working an increase, you do not work it into the very first stitch. You only work it into all the other stitches that are marked and the last stitch of the round. So I'll go ahead and show that. So I'll keep going here until I reach a marked stitch. Sorry, yarn is being weird here. Okay. So once I reach this next marked stitch, if this was an increase round, I would still take out my stitch marker. But then I would work two half double crochets into that same stitch that was just marked. And then I will pop the stitch marker back into the second stitch that I just made. So it's always going to be the very last one you created. You're going to put that stitch marker in there, just like you did in the very first increase round. So we'll do that again. Go ahead and We'll work until our next stitch marker. To my next one here. So I will go ahead and remove it. Work two half double crochets. And then put that stitch marker back into the last stitch I just made. And that will keep your stitch markers all relatively evenly dispersed. So as you continue, your stitch markers will continue to grow out with your yoke. Um, and then, like I said earlier, you don't work in the first stitch. You don't do an increase. That's just to indicate where the first stitch is. You will, however, always do an increase in the last one on an increase round. So for some of them, uh, the increase pattern is going to be only on even numbered row rounds. So that's going to basically be just always in the same spots. But at some point for many of the sizes, you're going to have some odd increase rounds as well. So what that's going to do, if you actually were counting these, there's going to be some slight like movement of the stitch markers. They're going to kind of move in a zigzaggy pattern back and forth, but they're all going to still be relatively the same distance apart. So the increases will still happen at those same points and it will still grow out evenly. So just trust as long as you are removing and replacing the stitch markers in the correct spots and increasing on the rounds you need to increase and not increasing on the rounds you don't increase, your yoke will grow at the rate that it should. Once it does, 
Um, I'll show you uh, what it should look like when you're with my actual sample um, of how big the yolk is going to look. And then after that, I'm going to show you the next step, which is splitting the yolk for your sleeves and your chest. As you continue to increase, your yolk should get to be a really large size. So as you can see, I've got quite a bit here. Um, so once you do that, it is now time to move to the next step, which is splitting for the uh, sleeves and the chest. Now, as you can see, it doesn't quite lie flat um, because you are increasing at different rates uh, throughout to go over the shoulders, but that's okay. It'll all launder and block out in the end. Um, but one of the things that I recommend is still maintaining the two stitch markers, one in the beginning and one in the end. So that way you know where the beginning and end are. And then what you'll do is in the pattern, it'll tell you to count out a certain number of stitches that you're going to work. And then you're going to do a chain to skip in order to be able to start breaking for the sleeves. And then you'll work a certain number around the edge, do the same thing, et cetera, all the way around to here. Now, um, if you do the stitch count, you'll notice that the back, which is going to be back here, is actually going to have fewer stitches than the front. And that's on purpose because I know for me, the uh, chest is going to protrude a little bit more than my back does. And for most people, that's going to be true. So there's always gonna be a little bit more room you might need in the chest. You can also customize and adjust that for whoever you're making this for, whether it's yourself or for somebody else. So if you find that you actually need less room in the chest, um, and more room in the back, then you can always adjust where you're going to do those splits. Um, if you need way more room in the chest and not as much in the back, you can adjust that as well. Um, as long as you get the same sleeve count, um, then that should still work out. But for me, I'm gonna just stick with what the pattern says. So what I'll first do is, this is my last stitch, so I'll, I'll do the turn here, okay? And it'll tell me to count out something like 68 stitches. So I would go through and be like, okay, so there's my very first stitch. So I'd count one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, Once I get to 68, I'm just going to pretend I'm at 68 here. So if this is my 68th stitch, what I would then do is take a stitch marker and I would go to the one right after that. And I would mark that stitch because that's going to be the first one I'm going to skip that will be part of the sleeve. So this is going to be my 68th stitch. So if your size tells you to know, do it for like the 60 stitches or 72 stitches or something like that, that's going to be the final stitch. Then you mark the one after that. Then it's going to tell you to skip a certain number. So we would then go, okay, well, that's my first stitch that I'm skipping. There's the second one and then the third, fourth, fifth, et cetera. So I'd count out and it says something like, you know, skip, I don't know, 40 stitches or something. So once I count to 40, so if it says 40, and this is the 40th stitch right here, then I'm going to actually mark that one because that is the last stitch that gets skipped because what's going to happen is I'm then going to work into this next one. So. I'm marking the first and last stitches of my sleeve section, and then that way I know exactly where I need to skip. And then it'll tell me to count a certain number again, so I'll do that, and then I'll mark the one after that to begin the sleeve, and then count how much I need to skip for the sleeve, mark the final one of the sleeve, and then the rest of the time I just work my way back over here. So I'm going to actually go ahead and do my setup off camera with my stitch markers, and then I'll show you what to do next. So I've gone ahead and marked where I needed to split the sleeves according to my size's pattern instructions. So once I did that, I went ahead and worked up the half double crochets and I'm about to approach my very first stitch marker. So I'll go ahead and finish up those half double crochets here. All right, and then I'm working into that very last one. And then the next thing you do is you're going to chain a certain number. So your pattern will tell you how big the chain needs to be depending on your size. So I'll go ahead and do my chains here. And then it says to skip whatever number, which I've already gone ahead and marked. So I'm going to skip all the way across to this stitch marker here. 
and this stitch marker marks the last one of the sleeve, so I'm going to work in the one just after it. So I'll go ahead and work my next half double crochet into that stitch right after that stitch marker. So I'll yarn over, insert, make sure I kind of pull everything tight right here, pull a loop, yarn over, pull through everything on here. And then what that does is if I can kind of hold it here, is that now that has created an opening for the sleeve of our sweater. So once I do that and I've joined to this next part, all I have to do is just work my half double crochets across the front. This will be the front of the sweater. And because we're working on the right side, that means this is going to be the outside showing. We want to make sure we pull the sweater to where we see the outside coming up. So if I accidentally have it going this way, then that's going to be inside out. We want to make sure we pull it to where what we're looking at is going to be on the outside of our sweater. So we'll go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and work across the front. Once I work across the front, all the way to here, I'm just going to repeat the exact same thing. I'm going to work in that last stitch, then I'll do my chain, skip all the way across until I get to this uh, marked stitch right here. And then I'll join with a half double crochet into that stitch right after. And then I'll just continue working all the way until I get to the end and join like normal. So I'm gonna work all of that off camera and then I will show you the end result once we've done this split and then what you're going to do on the next step to continue working the body of the sweater. Once you've worked up the split, it's going to now be able to fold and start forming what can recognizably look like an actual sweater. So we've got our shoulders going down here, we've got our neck opening, and then we've got the sleeve openings marked with the underarm chain and then we've got the body opening here and then we've got another uh, sleeve opening so you should have now three separate sections that you're going to be working on um, so i've already gone ahead and worked a little bit of the next part of our setup for the split so we'll take that out here and I've gotten to where I'm almost to the underarm chain here. So one thing to note is that the number of chains is going to also be the same number of stitches that you work across here. So I just want to show you how you can make sure you're getting every stitch that you need to. So um, these half double crochets are going to be the last two that are right before the chain. So I'm going to go ahead and work in those two. And then if I can turn the uh, turn, uh, the underarm chain here, we can see that we can, uh, those Vs that go across. So you'll see that there are five. There actually should be four chains, but one of these Vs is actually part of the last half double crochet that was worked in the previous round. So that's going to be one of the stitches we will actually work in. That's actually not one of our chains. Or you can even treat this one as the one that was worked into. But in either case, you're going to work four and then make sure you work into one of those. So if I turn back over here, what we're going to do is count that this is one, two, three, four chains. So you might have like six chains, eight chains, whatever. And then this one is going to be the next stitch that's part of here. So I'm going to go ahead and work four half double crochets across this chain. So there's one, two, three, and four. And because it's under the arm, however you put it into the chain, whether it's through the 
D itself, the back hump, the bottom, through two loops, whatever you want to do, it does not matter as long because it's not going to really be seen. As long as you get four or six or eight stitches, however many it is for your size, that's what matters. So then this final V, what I'm actually going to do is turn to look at how it is right here. That's going to be the next stitch I work into is going to be, if I can get closer here, this kind of like hole right there. Try to go under both loops of that V since that's the next half double crochet. And then that will count as my first stitch. And then I just keep going, working in every stitch along the body. Now notice that these stitch markers are still in place because those marked the first and last stitches of the sleeve. So right now we're not wanting to work on these sleeve stitches. So we're just skipping those. So by working across this chain, we're now just going to be working the body around and around and around and around again, just like we did when we were working the yoke before. So we'll just work half double crochets around, join with a slip stitch into the first stitch, turn, half double crochet around, join with the slip stitch in the first stitch, okay? So that's essentially how you work the next part of the setup round. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is when you're working the body, you have the option of doing the tapered waist, um, or you can do just a straight waist without any decreasing or anything like that. If you're going with a straight relaxed fit, just keep working half double crochets back and forth joining at the beginning one, turning, et cetera, et cetera, and then just work out the length that you need the sweater to be. So if you want to follow the pattern, you can do the same number of rounds, or if you need it longer or shorter, depending on where the wearer wants to have it sit, you can adjust however many rounds you want. But in the next clip, what I'm going to show you is how to do the tapered waist um, by doing the decreases down the sides. When doing the tapered waist and decreasing on the sides, one of the things the pattern will tell you is to count out a certain number of stitches, place a stitch marker, and that's going to be um, the indicator of where you're going to do your decrease. So it's not going to be perfectly centered under the underarm chain because it's an even number, but um, it's still going to basically tell you place it somewhere over here on the side, and that's going to act as basically our center stitch. So I'm gonna just go ahead and place a stitch marker here. What you'll do, is you will work half double crochets until you get to two stitches before the marker. So here I am working across, and we've got this center stitch now. And we've got three stitches left, so I'm gonna do one more. And so now I should have two stitches remaining. So I have two stitches left. So what I'm going to do is to decrease, I'm going to half double crochet two together. So how you do that is you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the very first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then before completing your half double crochet, we're going to insert into the next stitch right here, yarn over, pull up a loop. So now you should have four loops on your hook. And then we will yarn over and pull through all four and what that does is it decreases these two stitches down to one half double crochet stitch. Then we're going to work a regular half double crochet into our marked stitch. So we'll go ahead and work a half double crochet. And then I will place that stitch marker back into that center stitch that I just created. And then we will do the decrease again on the other side across the next two stitches. So once again, you'll yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, pull up another loop, four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all four. And now what's happened is on the side where there used to be five stitches, two on one side, your center stitch, and then two on the other, we've now dropped it to three one on this side, one center, one on this side, and that's how it's going to decrease down the side. So your pattern will tell you, if you want the tapered waist, how many rounds you'll work without decreasing, and then the round that you do decrease, you just do exactly what I just showed, where you will work to two stitches before the stitch marker, a half double crochet them together, work a half double crochet, and then half double crochet two together on the other side, 
to decrease it by two stitches down the side. And that will slowly bring the waist in so that you can have a more narrowed waist for a more tapered silhouette. And that is pretty much all you need to do. So go ahead and work up uh, your body. I will be working the remainder of my body off camera. And then the next step is going to be doing the join as you go band along the bottom hem of the body of your sweater. All right, so I just finished my very meditative journey of working a bunch of half double crochet rounds uh, for a long time, and hopefully you have too. And at this point, I only have a few more stitches left on my final round. So once you get to this point, you've completed the longest part of the sweater, so congratulations. So now it's time to get ready to do the setup for our uh, ribbing. So to do that, what we're going to do is finish working our final stitches, so I only have two more left here. So you can go ahead and remove that stitch marker. There we go. And then work those last two stitches that I have here. And then just like any of the previous rounds, we're going to join with the slip stitch into that very first stitch. So I'll go ahead and insert my hook through there. and then pull a slip stitch through and then make sure I just kind of tighten that so then that way it's nice and small. And then at this point, what I can do is I actually no longer need these stitch markers. So I can go ahead and take that out because I'm no longer working rounds that I need to connect. So once you do that, you're now ready to begin the ribbing. So this is called a join as you go ribbing. So this is really great for when you want to make ribbing, but don't want to make it separately and then have to worry about sewing it together and attaching it. Instead, you make it and it's joined um, to the body as you go. So to do that, what I'm actually going to do is zoom in. So we'll go ahead and zoom in real quick here so we can see a little bit more detail. And because we're working ribbing, what I want to do is switch out from my C hook to my B hook. So that's my B hook here. That's my 2.25 millimeter. That will give me a slightly tighter ribbing. So that way it will pull the bottom of the sweater in a little bit more and just give it a nice cleaner look and it won't be so baggy near the bottom. Now, if you find that the B hook makes the ribbing too tight on the bottom, you can always feel free to go back up to that C hook um, or whatever hook that you were using before. I just personally prefer that tighter ribbing. So in either case, it's all going to begin that same way uh, where we're going to be actually doing a chain up. So that chain up is going to be the size of the width of our ribbing. So for me, that means that I'm going to have uh, 18 stitches going along here. So to do that, what we're going to do is chain 19. So I'll go ahead and do one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. So I've got my stitch of, of 19. That makes quite a wide ribbing, but it'll eventually like, you know, cinch in once we actually make stitches. If you find that this is a little too wide, you can always shorten it to like, you know, 12 stitches. Or if you want an even bigger ribbing, you could always go up to maybe like 24 or something like that. Whatever number you want to do, you can just chain that much. So for me, I'm going to stick with my 18 and I'm going to kind of tighten that chain down that's right there. And then I'm going to work 18 half double crochets into each chain. So We'll go here and do yarn over, insert into my first, or the second chain from hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. And then I'll do the same thing into the next ones. So I've got two, three, okay, 17, and 18 in that last chain. So now what we need to do is we'll need to turn and start working half double crochets in the back loop only like we did when we made the ribbing for the neck. But what we first need to do is attach it to the bottom here. So right now we have this one chain or this one stitch that we worked into that was the first stitch of the last round and we just pulled, uh, we made a chain out of that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to skip that one and we're going to slip stitch into the next one. So we'll slip stitch into the second stitch and then we'll slip stitch into the next two
And that is what we will do anytime we join to the ribbing. So we're always going to be chaining or uh, doing three chains joined to the side of our, uh, sorry, to the bottom of our sweater. Because a half double crochet row is equal to one and a half uh, stitches basically. So two rows, which we're about to make, is going to take up three stitches, one and a half and one and a half. So what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and turn my work. And then I skip the three slip stitches. You don't ever work into those slip stitches. They're just there to join into the body. So I'll skip those three and then find my first half double crochet, which should be this stitch right here that has the little yarn over here. And I'm going to just yarn over once and go through the back loop only like we did with our ribbing on the neck. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. And that's my very first half double crochet. And then I'll do that again into the next one. Go through the back loop only. Half double crochet, that's number two. And then do it again all the way across. So I should still have a total of 18. So there's three. Seventeen and eighteen. And there we go. So now that I've done that, that is one row of half double crochets in the back loop only. So then we're going to chain one, turn our work, and then work half double crochets back loop only again. So it's just a repeat of the previous row. So it's just doing that over and over. So we're gonna have 18 back loop only half double crochets. Oh, I split my yarn there. Let's try again. There's two and three. Seventeen and eighteen. All right, and then now that I'm back to the body, I just do the same thing I did before. So we just need to be careful not to accidentally work into this one because we've already got a chain through that. So we're going to find the next three, and we're going to slip stitch into those three. One, two, three. And then I just do that over and over. So you're going to keep doing that back and forth, just working half double crochets back loop only to the end, and then come back and then slip stitch three, turn back loop only, come back, slip stitch three, turn, and just keep doing that. This is definitely going to be another meditative journey where you're going to be doing the same thing for a very long time, but it is going to be well worth it for the look in the end. Ribbing always gives a nice polished look to the bottom of any good sweater. So I'm going to go ahead and work that off camera. Once I get close to the end, I will show you what to do to join your ribbing at the end. I have just made my way uh, with my ribbing all the way around the bottom and I'm now down to uh, the last few stitches. So one thing to note is that you're doing, you know, three slip stitches each for two rows of half double crochets. But in the end, if you don't get exactly three stitches left, it's really not that big of a deal. You have a couple of options. You could either just work into the next three, do your next two rows of half double crochet ribbing, and then just kind of skip that stitch. Um, or you could do two do your ribbing and then two and then do your ribbing. Um, or you could do three and then, or sorry, you could do um, one, two, three, and then one, two, and then your third one could be like this very first one. It, it doesn't really matter. This is definitely enough space for me to do at least two more rows and even really four more. And then after that, I can still do the joining like I normally would. So I've got a couple more stitches here. So I'm going to work those. Now that I've done that, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and just work two instead of three because I've got plenty of room to be able to do a couple more sets of rows here. So I'll do two slip stitches here. And then I'll turn, work my half double crochets, come back, and then work these two stitches. Once I do that off camera, I will join back with you and show you how to do the joining. 
I just finished working my last ribbing row and worked my last stitch in the back loop only. So now what we need to do is before we begin the join, we have to actually do a slip stitch through the first stitch of the body. So that's going to be this one right here that the very first row came out of. So what we'll do is we'll just insert our hook through there, yarn over, and just pull the loop through everything. What that does is it just secures the top of that final row just to the body and gives us a nice um, smooth transition. So now we're ready to actually begin working through our stitches to join. So in the instructions, it says to join as you did with the neck ribbing. So just like with the neck ribbing, what you're going to do is take your right sides facing up like this. You're gonna place the last row of your stitches on top of the first rows free loops so that they layer on top of each other like so. And then you'll just work through each stitch going through both the stitch of the last row and the free loops of the chain from the first row, and you'll slip stitch through those. So to do that, you're going to want to make sure that your yarn always stays to the back. So we're going to keep that underneath both of our um, sides here. And then what we'll do is we'll find the last stitch that we made, which is going to be right there. Yeah, so it should be that V right there. Um, or is it this one? You know what? It really doesn't matter. As long as you essentially get all of them joined together, it should be just fine. So we're just going to go insert our hook through the V of the first stitch. And then we'll find the free loop of the chain from our first row. So it's going to be this one right here. And so we'll insert through that front ways, just like so. And then our hook should, or our yarn should still be behind everything. You're going to yarn over. And then just pull that yarn through everything that was on the hook. And then that joins it like that. And then we just find the next one. So if we look along here, we can see the V's at the tops of our stitches. And then we can see that there are these V's along the side because the half double crochet, there's this yarn over that was with it. So what we'll do is we'll insert our hook through each of these side V's going underneath the top V's like that. So that's going to be our second one. Then to find the next chain, I just basically look to see where's the next gap that we need to work into. So there's the gap that was right here. So my next gap is going to be right here underneath this kind of twist that was part of the chain. So we'll just insert through the front there and then we'll grab our yarn and just pull it through everything. And that is stitch number two. And then I just find the next V. So this is my side V right there. And then I'm going to go through that, make sure I'm going underneath the top V of the half double crochet, and then find the next gap that I need to work into of my chain. I'm going nice and slowly, pulling through everything. And so you just continue doing that all the way until you get to the end. So because we have 18 stitches, that's quite a bit, and it would get pretty boring watching me do that on camera. So I'll go ahead and finish up the rest of these off camera and then show you what to do once you get to the end there. Okay, so I'm on my last two here. So I'll go through one. And and you definitely want to make sure that you take your time go nice and slow on this part there's no need to rush this this one is not a quick part to get through because in the end you want it to look really really good so once we do that we can now smooth it out and see our work here and we've got this nice little ribbed ridge join that looks very much like the rest of the ribbing and when you turn it to the back it's the same so it's very beautiful and so that way it won't be very noticeable whenever you're actually wearing it so then after that all you're going to do is sorry about that uh go ahead and fasten off and then you would pull your yarn through and then you would just weave that end in and you've got yourself a nice beautiful bottom ribbing of your sweater now that we've done that the only thing left now is to work on the sleeves.
I'm coming now to the stitch marker on the other side. So what we're going to do is go ahead and work our last half double crochet around the sleeve onto or into that stitch. So I'll go ahead and take out my stitch marker here. Work a half double crochet. And then very similarly to how we did the previous stitch on the corner is we're going to locate the chains to see where our first chain is that we need to go into. So um, for me, since I did eight uh, chains, I know that I have four on both sides. So I'm going to find that this is the last one right here. So there's one, two, three, and then four kind of right there. And then, let's see here, one, two, three, four right there. And so I've got this gap right here. But just like before, this gap also has some stitches that are worked along here that I can work into. Now this one might be a little bit more of a bigger jump. So what you can actually do is do two yarn overs anywhere in here. So um, you can feel free to do however you want to, but I just kind of like the way it looks if I can just get as many things to cover this gap as I can. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook here, pull up one loop, and then I'm going to go into maybe like right here just before the actual chain that I need to work into and pull up a loop. Then I'll go ahead and yarn over and go through the actual chain that I need to work into. So there's chain number one. Get right there. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through everything on my hook. And there we go. And then that helps to kind of close up that gap. Now I've got a little bit of a loose yarn there, so I might redo that one again. So if you're ever unhappy with the way it looks, you can just undo it, try again. So what I might do is just pull up another loop here, pull up a loop right here. That was the one that was a little loose, so I'll keep it a little tighter this time. Then do my yarn over, insert into that first chain. And there we go. Okay, that looks much better. Okay. So by doing that, I haven't changed the stitch count. It's still one half double crochet. It only has one V at the top there that we'll need to work into later. And then now I just work into the next three chains. So they're going to be these three chains right here. So I yarn over, go through that chain, half double crochet, one to the next one, half double crochet. And the final one, half double crochet. And now I should be back to the beginning of my round. And so then I will just join with a slip stitch like I did on the previous um, rounds with the body. So go ahead and insert my hook into that first stitch. Yarn over, pull through everything, and just tighten it down there so that way that gets nice and tight. And then turn my work. And then once it's turned, I am now going to work round two. So round two, you work it just like you did round um, any rounds that you've done with the body. I'm just going to yarn over, insert into that very first stitch, complete my half double crochet. And then what I like to do is go ahead and take a stitch marker and mark this as the first stitch of the round. So that way I always have my first and last stitches marked to remind me of my beginning and end. Okay. Now, I'm not needing to do this at this point, but I am going to go ahead and just show you. And that is uh, how to decrease for the tapered sleeve look. So every size is going to have its own um, decrease pattern. So it's going to say, you know, for your size, uh, decrease every seven rows or seven rounds or nine rounds or 12 rounds or so on. Um, and then you'll work a certain number of them without any decreasing at the end for the wrist. So anytime that that happens, every size will do it the same way. You'll always start by working one half double crochet into the very first stitch, and then you'll work a half double crochet two together across the next two. So to do that, you're going to yarn over, insert into the first half double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
insert into the next half double crochet. Sorry, oh, I actually put that in incorrectly. To so go there, make sure it's going through the actual top piece there. Okay, sorry about that. So you'll insert, pull up a loop, then you'll insert into the next half double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, you'll have four loops on your hook, then you'll yarn over and pull through all four. And there you go, that's your first decrease. Then you'll just work half double crochets into all the remaining stitches until you get to the last three right here. So the last three are going to include the one that we have marked plus these two right here. So once you get to these three, you're going to do a decrease by doing half double crochet two together on these two and then work a regular half double crochet into that final stitch. So you're always going to do half double crochet, half double crochet two together, work all the way around, half double crochet two together, and then one final half double crochet, and then you'll slip stitch into the first stitch of the round, chain, or uh, go, turn around, or sorry, turn your work, and then just continue working like normal without decreasing until your next one. So really the decreasing here works the same way as it did with the waist in the um, body, and that is that you're just working half double crochets two together, but this time instead of doing them on you know two opposite sides, you're doing them right here at the join so that they all stay underneath the arm. Yeah, so that's really all there is to decreasing. I'm going to go ahead and take mine out because that's not what I need to do on mine quite yet. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and work the rest of my sleeve off camera, including all the decreasing. I've gone ahead and finished working up my sleeve off camera, and as you can see, I've already done the cuff. Um, so I'm not showing that on camera only because the way you work the cuff for the sleeve is literally exactly the same as you do for the bottom of the body. So um, if you'll check out the uh, timestamp that I'm going to be posting on the screen, you can always go back to that to show how to work the uh, ribbing here. Um, but now what I am going to show you is what to do about all of these loose ends. So because the sweater is I designed it to basically be like someone's very first sweater. Um, so you might be a beginner and want to know like, you know, what are some tips or tricks on how to weave in yarn in? So I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to show you that here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out a yarn needle. So I've got my yarn needle here. So you'll want your yarn needle and you'll want a pair of uh, thread scissors or yarn scissors. And then one thing I like to do is just kind of find like where it needs to go. And especially if you're joining the yarn in from the end of like some ribbing you're going to have kind of this maybe like little bit of a gap that's going to be right here so what i like to do is kind of close that gap up so i'm going to go ahead and zoom in here so that we can see what we're going to do so what i do is go ahead and thread the yarn through my needle and then we just need to find where it's going to need to close the gap. So what I do is I kind of pull the yarn to the back and then I'm going to go through the back of this stitch that's on the opposite side of that gap and then come in through the back. And once I do that, I just pull the yarn through. I don't pull too tightly because I don't want it to be too cinched in, but I do want it to kind of close that gap up so you can see that it's a little bit cleaner there. Then what I'll do is I will pull my yarn to the front here and then I will go through this last V of my slip stitch that I joined with and just go straight through it and pull the yarn through to the back. And then what that does is it just creates this much more smooth edge to my ribbing. Then from there, it doesn't really matter at this point what you're going to, like where exactly you're going to work, but a lot of times people will work on the inside or on the wrong side, and then they just kind of find these um, ridges or these stitches or something like that, and then they just kind of work their way into those. So I'm going to just kind of go underneath these stitches here, then I'll go underneath the next stitches, like so. Then go underneath the next ones. 
and then just do that across a few stitches. One thing you want to be careful of is to make sure you're not accidentally just going under the work and like your needle is just popping out. So like right here, I've got kind of a bigger gap where my needle is showing. So that means that this thread is going to come through as well. So I might actually pull back and find where that was. And that's going to be like right about here. So then I'll just make sure it's only going through the stitch and not through the other side. Yeah. This part is just kind of like, you know, you feel around and try to put your needle where it works. Do that. Let's go a little bit. So I don't have to go super far. It's because what I'll do is to reinforce it. Pull through. Don't pull too tightly because again, you don't want it to cinch up here. Is I then find another stitch that I can go in through the side. So I'll find maybe this one right here. So I'll go through the side of it just to give it something for the yarn to wrap around. And then I go back through those same stitches a second time, but this time in the opposite direction. What this does is it takes your yarn and has it have two different directions of pull so that no matter which way you pull the fabric, the thread or the yarn is going to pull in both directions and basically stay in place. So it's not, it's reducing the risk of it being pulled and then being pulled completely out of where you um, wove it in. But here what will happen is no matter which way I might pull it, whether it's right or left, it's pulling in both directions so my yarn isn't going anywhere. And even when I pull it this way, it's staying nice and secure. Now, for an added bit of benefit, especially since this yarn does have some silk in it, um, it might be a little bit smoother and might have a little bit, you know, I might, I might just want to add a little bit of extra security. I go ahead and do maybe a third pass, but I don't do any more than three. Only because if you do more than three into the same stitches, it starts to thicken it up to the point where it's just, it's, it's bulky and doesn't look very good. But I go ahead and maybe like find like, you know, one more pass through those same stitches. Come on. There we go. Ugh. Okay. And then once you pass through, You'll pull the yarn all the way through and then just kind of give it a little tug so then that way it's uh, sitting as naturally as possible and you can see that when we look on the other side it's perfectly hidden and then we're going to take our scissors and go ahead and just snip it pretty close to where we pulled it out from give it one more final little tug there really hide that end in and then there you go you have now woven in your very first end so then all you have to do is go through the rest of your sweater and you just have to find any other ends you may have uh, left. So like when you joined a ball of yarn um, where you may have started or stopped a section. So like down here we have the beginning of the ribbing or maybe this was like a joining row for when I joined the bottom ribbing, any of those things. So what you do is you just go through, find all those ends, weave them in through, you know, some stitches going back and forth to give it that like, you know, opposite pull to keep it secure and then just snip off the end. Once you do that, you are then going to be ready to launder and potentially block your sweater. So in the next section, I will show you how to do all of that after I weave in all of my own ends. To do the washing and the blocking, what you'll need is a nice sized sink. I just like to use my kitchen one after, of course, you know, I've cleaned out any dishes or anything like that. Make sure it's nice and rinsed out so that way I'm not getting any food particles on here. But you can really use any um, basin of something that will hold water. So I go ahead and I plug it in and then I'm going to run a cold to cool water bath because with wool, I don't really want to use like super hot water, even with super wash wool only because then it will potentially felt. So then what I'll do is use some wool wash here. Um, this is just some like eucalyn uh, wool wash with the jasmine scent. Um, there will be instructions that will tell you how much to use and everything. I pretty much just use like a, you know, good little splash there. 
And what's really great about this is this is a no rinse wool wash. So that means that you're going to just be able to soak it and then it will get into the fibers, but then you don't have to run any rinse through it. It won't be, you know, trapped in the fibers or anything. It'll dissolve on its own. But you go ahead and let that, you know, kind of fill up. And then what you'll do is you'll take your sweater and then you're just going to press it gently into the water. And just let it slowly soak up all of that water, all of that wool wash, and just get it until it's completely submerged all the way in. So if there are any pieces that are peeking up above the surface, I go ahead and kind of try to find a way to get it to at least sit below the surface. Try to get those bubbles equally distributed if I can. I try not to, you know, like rub or twist or anything like that because you don't want to accidentally, you know, warp or um, felt any of the fibers. But we go ahead and just kind of press that in. It should be enough water now. Go ahead and just kind of give that a nice little push. Ah, oh, that stuff smells so good. Oh my goodness, yes. Okay. All right. That should be good. And then, depending on the instructions for whatever wool wash you might be using, um, you let it soak for anywhere from like 15 to 30 minutes. And then after that time, um, you'll then press out all of the water and then you will lay it out to dry. So I'm going to let mine sit here for that amount of time. And then once it is time for me to pull it out, I will go ahead and show you my next steps. All right, I've let it soak for about half an hour. So now what I'm going to do is kind of give it another little press through here just to make sure it's like, you know, nice and all through all those fibers. Okay, and then gently just lift it up and let it drain. And then as it's draining, I'm kind of, you know, just like pressing water out of the sweater. Ugh. There's nothing like the smell of wet wool. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Wool, it's fun to work with. It's really nice, but definitely take the good with the bad here. Okay. So without twisting or wringing or anything, you're just pushing and squeezing water. And then what I like to do, I know some people, what they'll do is roll it up in a towel and just kind of keep pressing it to try to really soak out all the water. But I frankly don't have that patience, so instead what I actually do is run my sweaters through a drain cycle on my washing machine, because what that does is it spins really, really fast and just really squeezes all that water out without any rubbing, so it doesn't you know, run the risk of felting or anything like that on the wool. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quickly, and then I'll show you the next step of how to set it out for blocking. I've now got my sweater ready to put on my blocking mats. So I've laid out my blocking mats and each one of these is just a square inch. So what I do is try to make sure that it matches with the measurements that I want the sweater to be. So one of the first things I actually do is line up the bottom with the like a bottom line here. And then that's gonna be where I will eventually place my very first uh, blocking pins. So what I use is just the Mindful Collection by Knitter's Pride. You can really use any kind of blocking pins that you want to. Um, I'll have links in the description box for where you can find some like these. But I just take these and just kind of find where it's going to need to go and just kind of line them up. And then you just carefully poke through where you want your sweater to be. Okay, so say it needs to go about there. It needs to go probably about here. And I know that it needs to be about 25 or 24 inches up for the um, person that I'm making this for. So I can count like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 ish. So I know that it needs to be probably right about here. 
Okay, I'm going to smooth that out here. It might be a little bit more stretched, but that's okay. Okay. Just going to smooth it out there. All right. And then once I do, I can make sure that the sides uh, come out to where I need them to be. So um, in the pattern, you do a tapered side or you can do a straight side. I went ahead and widened it, widened it a bit here um, to accommodate the person I'm making for. Uh, they have a little bit more of a belly. So I go ahead and just give them a little bit of room here. So I go ahead and pop my little knit blockers out here to make sure that those stay stretch to where they need to be and just keep it nice and smooth. This is also a great time for you to make sure that like your rows are not like, you know, tilted or there's no wrinkles or anything in it. Um, go ahead and open up these now. So I still like to use these bigger ones while I can. And then I kind of take the sleeves and shoulders and just kind of line them up to where they will round a bit here. There we go. So I want to make sure that that shoulder stays about there and then I'll smooth that out and pull that shoulder over to about here yeah and you just eyeball and if you don't like where some, something is you can just remove a knit blocker and reconfigure it and put it where it needs to go this is really more like just how do you want the sweater to be shaped and then you just kind of force it into that shape there we go so I'll make sure that that stays lined up there that sleeve to be lined up right here. There we go. And do the same thing over here with that sleeve. There we go. All right. This actually looks like it's not needing a ton of aggressive blocking. So some pieces you might need to do a lot of stretching to get it to really shape the way you want to. But it looks like this one is going to pretty much stay in the shape that we want. So go ahead and put a few right here at the neckline just to make sure it gets that nice little central rounded look. And it looks like it's actually looking pretty good. So then the next thing I do is if there's any fine work, such as if I want this to not be so um, crinkled up, I can take these smaller T-pins, which are just these individual ones. And then I can kind of, you know, work little tiny corners and just push or pull or stretch parts of it to get where I need it to go. So I want this part to be a little bit more out. There we go. And then now I can put this back to where I want it to be there. There we go. That way it's a little bit more of a smoother corner right there to match with that one. There we go. I'm pretty satisfied with that. So now what I'll do is go ahead and place a nice box fan and I'm just going to set it on to like, you know, medium or low or high, whatever you really want to do it on. And then just let it blow air across your piece and give it about um, 24 to 48 hours just to completely dry. And then after that, you're able to remove the pins and then you've got a perfectly beautiful sweater to wear. So that is all there is to making your very own version of the Zephyr sweater. If you liked this tutorial and found it helpful, please feel free to like the video. And if you could also go ahead and hit subscribe, so that way I can be able to keep producing more videos for you and provide more tutorials for future patterns. Thank you and have a wonderful day.